Um, where do I get the mass? It's not given. Mm -mm. Not quite from the molarity. If you do it from the molarity, you're going to get actually the mass of these. But this is just one little reaction that's happening in this big container. So not quite. That would be the mass of something, but not what we want. Okay, there's a very standard way here. This is not. Oh, you uh, can get um, specific uh, peak capacity, right? Because that's what we did for lab. What did you do for lab? Um, we didn't really need the uh, specific heat or the mass of our standard print cup. We just got the uh, uh, heat capacity from something else. That's true. However, in this case, um, this isn't, we're not talking about the cup here. We're talking about the solution inside the cup. So this is going to be a pretty standard way. You want to definitely remember the following. Whenever you have a liquid and they don't give you the straight mass, you're going to use the following formula. Density is mass over volume. Okay? So mass is density times volume. What's my volume? Yeah, the sum of these two things. 100 plus 50, 150 milliliters, or 0 0.150 liters. I don't know. It depends what you, the density is, 150 milliliters. Okay, density. What the heck is the density? Yeah, one. How did you know that? You're right. From the text, it's given on the first. Yeah, we're assuming that the density of this thing is similar to the density of water, which is fine for your average liquid. Okay, so we're going to assume the density of this is the same for water. It's given on the back of your test. It's going to be in your book. It's uh, you need to look this up. One gram per milliliter. Oh, if I one gram per milliliter times one fifty, one hundred fifty grams. Check. Is that okay? All right, so again, I'm finding T final, I got T initial, got heat capacity, got mass, or this is specific heat, got mass. Delta H now. Delta H is here. That's nice, but I've got to convert it a little bit. So I'm actually going to say minus 56 kJs per mole. First, I, I need to get that in joules because this is going to be in joules. It's a very common thing you'll have to do with delta H all the time is do this conversion. One kilojoule is 1,000 joules. The other extremely common thing that you'll have to do for this reaction is to get rid of the moles. Okay? So in this case, this is the moles of the reaction. So in this case, I need the moles of each of these things. I've got to find uh, I've got to find the overall mole. So, uh, well, let's see where am I going to put this? You essentially, hi, welcome. Hi. Come take a seat wherever you want. Okay. So I'm going to multiply these two to get the moles of this. I'm going to multiply also these two to get the moles of that, and that, those moles, I'll just say, moles, right, go right there. Is that okay? Uh, really, you're going to take, it looks from the numbers that they're going to be about the same number, I don't know, uh, but I would take the smaller one, because when this is balanced, it's one to one uh, to one to one. So I just take the smaller number. I don't know, whatever that number is. When you multiply those two, you put it there. And then this delta H term goes right here. This whole thing, right there. Is that okay? Yeah. So is it for the mole, we just pick one of the two of the mole, or we plus it together? Yeah, let me see the, uh, let me look right here. I think it has it pre-calculated for us. So I can tell you the number. See, this is 4B, right? Yeah, uh, they're pretty much going to be the same number. <laughs> this one for the HCl is going to be 0.1. This number right here 
is going to be 0.09. They're pretty much the same number. You have to take the smaller number, this one, uh, because that one's a limiting reactant. Okay, whichever one's smaller in this case, and you put that number right there, right here. Okay, any other questions? That's just a setup, you calculate it. The final answer is going to be 33.4 is the final answer. Okay. Um, where do you get the 56 kilojoules? This number right here? Yeah. It's given. Oh, it's no given. Question. Oh. Now you just plug that in at the bottom. That value right es essentially, yeah, it goes right here. Okay. You just got to convert it to joules. Okay. That's why I had to go through and change this to joules and get rid of the moles. And the way you get rid of the moles is to find the moles of each of these. And since they didn't specify which one to pick, mm -hmm. they both have a one-to-one -one molar ratio. You pick the smaller number. That's the limiting reactant is essentially the one you want to pick, okay. which is the one with the smaller number. Mass. This one? Yeah. Mass, you need to remember, is density times volume. So density, we're assuming a density of water. Okay. Whenever you're kind of mixing stuff to do a reaction, it happens in aqueous solution, just like this. If it's aqueous solution, you assume this density of one gram per milliliter. Volume, I got, I just added what they added. 150 plus 50 is 150. And so, 150 milliliters times one gram per mole is going to be 150 grams. Well, I changed it to liters, and then I realized, oh, this is grams per mil, so this is irrelevant. Okay. It's 150 milliliters. Is that okay?